Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for joining us today. My friend and colleague, Dr. Chris Reinhardt, is our guest, and we're going to talk about some things associated with calf prices, preconditioning, animal health, even all the way to the carcass value, some of the applications we see in the feedlot. Thanks for joining us. I know you're going to enjoy this show. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey, Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Folks, Dr. Chris Reinhardt is a professor in animal science and industries here at Kansas State University, and he is our state feedlot specialist and is a good friend of mine and somebody that I bop up and down the road around Kansas and outside of Kansas with and, and do a lot of research and so have a lot of respect and, and uh, appreciation for what Dr. Reinhardt does for the beef industry and for what he does for the state of Kansas. And, you know, there's a lot going on in this industry right now. A it's lot of, it is uh, exciting, exhilarating, um, <laughs> anxiety. <laughs> I mean, about any kind of uh, adjective you can use to describe, it has been that and more. It's been a crazy, basically 18 months, 24 months, it sure has. You know, I, when I see calf, calves going out, these 270 weight calves going out for five bucks a pound in, in regional sale barns, uh, you know, I can remember a day when we paid less for, per pound for a steak. Um, <laughs> and this is, this is just being weaned and mooing and, and uh, you know, that, you know, what, what is with these calf prices and cattle prices? The way I summarize it, <clears throat> excuse me, I summarize it all down to the, world's want, the world wants more of what we do and what we make. And so there is a pull through. It's, it's a long convoluted route from the consumer's plate and export markets all the way back to that 270 pound calf. But uh, it, it is, for the most part, I think, being driven by, by global demand for beef. But then on the, I'll call it the local or the regional level, as you and I talked about previously, there's a ton of grass compared to just the past three years. There's grass we've never, we haven't had and seen for quite a while, and people are wanting to make good value out of that. And I think it's interesting too that we have these shifts in in where the droughts have occurred, and our our friends in in California are going through a severe drought um, now. And, and it wasn't, but when I look back at some of our closeouts from 2012 and 2013 you know, where we were really going through the drought and we didn't have grass opportunities. And of course, now when you look at the rains that have come through this high plains region, whether it's southern high plains or, or northern high plains, we really got a lot of opportunities to place cattle out on grass. Um, but then there, there also are empty holes in the, the feedlots. There are uh, empty spots in the feedlot and they're pulling calves. We've got relatively cheap grain and so everything is clicking right in the right place for the rancher right now. You bet. And I think that's something that, that understanding is that, you know, feed yards still wind up being a, a margin business. And so, you know, good times and, and bad times for the beef industry or cattle prices in general, um, they're more of a, a flat part of the industry because they're going to buy them high and sell them high or buy them low and sell them low. 
um, hopefully, um, or buy them low and sell them high. That's where we want to be. But, but you know, it really is a good time for the for the rancher and the opportunity to 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 cash in on on some leaner years. It's it's a really good time to to have calves for sale. Yep, and some cow calf pears and a bowl and <laughs> everything. But uh, when we come back, let's talk. We'll jump into some of the things about preconditioning and some of the pull through marketing signals that we're seeing even in this up cattle market. You're watching Doc Talk. More after these messages. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Emily Sievert was raised in a small farming community in Western Ohio and is a fourth year student at the Ohio State University College of Veterinary Medicine. She studied bovine respiratory disease in beef feedlots and was also involved in a related telemedicine project. Upon graduation, Emily plans to focus on food animal medicine, pathology, and food safety. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Be sure to join me in Wichita, Kansas, September 15th and 16th, as myself, Dr. Tom Knopfsinger, and Dr. Mike Appley are gonna host Beef Today's Cowboy College. We're gonna talk about how to start cattle on feed and some of the new management techniques of getting calves started on feed. To register, go on the internet to www.beeftoday.com backslash cowboy college, get registered, and I'll see you in Wichita, Kansas, September 15th and 16th. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher. Get the new Hired Hand for yourself or become a distributor. Visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk from the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State University. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson with the co-director of the Beef Cattle Institute with myself, uh, Dr. Chris Reinhardt, and he's a professor over in the Animal Science Department and and we've had a good relationship between vet med and animal science, and that's really what the Beef Cattle Institute is about, is, you know, collaboration and kind of like the real world. It isn't just a vet question or just a nutrition question. That's the way we're going to get to the heart of all of these issues that affect the beef industry day after day. Uh, I, I don't ever remember when I was in practice or when I was working in a cattle feeding operation that it was a, a unilateral uh, or singular issue. It involved everybody on the premise to solve the, the issues that we need to get done. But one of the things that, that, you know, you're sitting there with a group of calves out on your ranch and you're going to get this much, these record prices. And you decide, you know what, why am I going to monkey around with um, preconditioning? And, and, and so you, you take the point in time where um, do I precondition or do I not precondition and, and how do we talk to people about doing the right thing even in this up cattle market? Well, two things, Doc, is number one, the data screams loudly, the value, I'll talk strictly in terms of animal health and the, the value of the animal 
performance-wise, carcass data-wise, of calves that don't get sick when they come to the feedlot or to the stalker operation. But then secondly, I've thought about that a lot the past couple of weeks is, do you want to market your calves this year or do you want to start forging some long-term relationships? Uh, there's every, every chance that calf prices won't be continuing to skyrocket for the, the next 10 or 20 years. If we can help ranchers create a long-term program, a long-term animal health program, that's going to create value for the, the next owner of those calves. I think those are things that need to also go into the equation. Absolutely. So let's jump into some of the, the health and, and, you know, being someone that's we're both on the, uh, participate on the feedlot side, when I'm paying record prices, the one thing that I don't want is excess death loss. That, that is the, the most obvious, uh, the most obvious loss in, in any operation. Yeah. And we talk about it as it's just an economic signal. It's, it's a lot more than that. It, some have said death is the ultimate breach of animal welfare. And, and you know, we understand that we're going to have diseases. We have children that get sick. We have calves that are going to get sick. We're not going to prevent it. But we also understand what good husbandry uh, brings to the table. And so, you know, what, what are some of the, the things, you know, we got a little bit here before we go to break. You know, if you were going to tell somebody in a nutshell, why do you want to, why, why should they precondition? the performance that will be reaped by the next owner all the way down to the carcass value uh, are abundant and really well documented. Cool. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the perception of calf value. We're going to talk about how those calves perform in the feedlot, and then we'll eventually get to talking about that carcass and the value of the carcass feedback to you, the rancher. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. More after these messages. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Hello folks, this is Dr. Nels Lindbergh with Animal Medical Center and Production Animal Consultation out of Great Bend, Kansas. Today's BQA Tip of the Day, we want to visit about castration of cattle. There are many tools that we need to castrate animals, scalpel blade, newberry, calicrate. We want to focus on being very clean and sanitizing our, our instruments as we are castrating. But more importantly, we want to visit about the age in which we are castrating these animals. We get so many animals that we're castrating 500 pounds, 900 pounds, very big animals. We want to be able to castrate these animals when they're babies or newborn to where we're only using a scalpel blade and we have minimal effect on these animals, their life, pain, performance. They go on, do the proper things, and we don't have to castrate these animals when they're 500 pounds or 1,000 pounds. It's best for the animal. We want to do what's best for that calf. Thank you. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. unbelievable. True Test Group, 
weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey folks, Dr. Dan back with Dr. Chris Reinhart. We're from the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State University. And, and Chris, when we left, we were talking about preconditioning, the health, the performance, and, and things to that. And, and you and I have discussed, you know, the difference between a low-risk calf and a high-risk calf generally has been used as, uh, as a, a health indicator, a morbidity ranker, with the high-risk calves being the mismanaged cattle that come in that have the high spike in morbidity and the low-risk cattle being the ones that were managed correctly um, that have a lower, but it, the high risk and low risk doesn't necessarily just mean health, does it? It Let's tie it back to what you had mentioned previously about death loss. If I don't know how sick those calves are going to be and I don't know how many are going to die, I've got huge risk on the economic side. And so, so then we're talking about, you know, the inability to um, forecast or, or predict on how those calves are going to feed and, and inability to predict. There's more variability in the closeout. Huge. And, and if, and if feed, feeders and stalker operators are going to be paying twelve and $1,500 for a single animal, uh, they want to know that that animal is going to perform, stay alive, and hopefully lead to a profitable outcome. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think that, that we see some of the people out there, the bigger operations, will say, well, you know, we don't need to feed preconditioned calves. And, and, and so as the increase in the size of your operation goes up, and the more of these animals you buy, the more likelihood is you're going to hit that projection average for morbidity and mortality, and, and they do wind up being easier to project as a whole. But if you're feeding one pen, or two pins or three pins or maybe a thousand head or two thousand head it can be tremendously devastating if if you get the wrong mismanaged cattle coming into your operation strike one and you're out you mentioned some of these ranches in the high plains that have grass for the first time in three years uh, they're not going to be feeding ten turns in a row they're, they kind of got one jag this summer to make it work and they buy fifteen hundred head of calves that turn out to be uh, pardon my French, but junk, uh, they may lose the whole enchilada. Yep. And, and, you know, when you start to start to think about some of these, these wrecks or things that we could get into, you know, it really does boil down to what sort of risk you as someone who's buying the calves is willing to, to take on those cattle. That's exactly right. And so the, the amount of money and the amount of capital being invested in feeder cattle right now is historically high and so all of our operators need a tremendous line of credit they have to have some assurance that it's going to pay back and they're going to be in business next year yep so by definition you know we got about 30 seconds here before we have to go to break but for definition what's your definition of a properly managed or pre preconditioned calf theoretically if i could control the entire process that calf would be weaned from its mother for a minimum of 30 but better 45 days bunk broke to where we've taught it how to eat out of a bunk, a good blended ration uh, out, of, uh, out of a good feeding system, the ability to eat out of a mechanical watering device of some kind, and, and more, more importantly, uh, and then have all the foundation vaccinations, uh, at least one round of the virals, uh, possibly the bacterials, and, and I'll let you comment on that. But, but basically, if we could do everything we do at the feedlot, only do it at the ranch for a minimum 45, maybe even two months, that calf is going to be ready to, the, ready to come to the feedlot and perform. Prepare the calves. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. More after these messages. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff.
it must be a, uh, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope, and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living, obviously. But it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, and the reason we do it's been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Be sure to join me in Wichita, Kansas, September 15th and 16th, as myself, Dr. Tom Knopfsinger, and Dr. Mike Appley are going to host Beef Today's Cowboy College. We're going to talk about how to start cattle on feed and some of the new management techniques of getting calves started on feed. To register, go on the internet to www.beeftoday.com backslash cowboy college, get registered, and I'll see you in Wichita, Kansas, September 15th and 16th. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson, Dr. Chris Reinhardt from Kansas State University and the Beef Cattle Institute. And before we jump into this next segment, you know, one of the questions that I always get is getting apples to apples and backgrounding versus preconditioning calves. Preconditioning is weaning those calves on the ranch of origin, getting them bunk broke 30 to 45 days, proper vaccinations, castrations, dewormed, everything to prepare them to go to the, the next phase. Backgrounding is when you can buy any calf and you bring them into an operation and they're commingled off the ranch of origin and, and started. So, so just to get terminology, sometimes we mix precondition, have a preconditioning yard versus a backgrounding yard. That's really a backgrounding yard if it's off the ranch. But, but uh, Chris, we got a couple minutes here. Let's talk about the effects of not preconditioning on carcass value because a lot of people, you know, that, that's the end goal is producing that, that good quality carcass. Yeah, we're in the food business. We're not just in the cattle business. And so, so talk to me a little bit about if I don't precondition, if these calves do get sick, what am I doing to performance and, and inevitably that, that carcass? Two things. There, there's really two kinds of sickness. There's the one kind, as you well know, that just never get better. And they don't eat well, they don't gain well, and they wind up, I'll call them going to an alternative marketing pathway. There's the, the more common form of disease is simply where calves come down with some respiratory disease for a period of time. And what we've learned over the past few years is for every day that calf is sick, he is not competing with his pen mates. As he gets over that disease and battles back, he does perform normally in quotes, uh, but he'll always be behind. And so we're going to have to feed that calf longer if we have that opportunity to attain that same carcass endpoint. So in other words, if a calf's sick, or not consuming feed where they, they should be because of clinical illness for 21 days, they could be 21 pounds Easy. or 30 pounds behind the cohort that, that was healthy. Exactly. And so, but once they get over that, they can perform and gain and lay down marbling and things of that nature. But in that time when they have that depressed intake from being sick, that's when we have that stall or that pause, they hit the pause button on, on growth. And they hit the pause button, unfortunately, on marbling deposition. Gotcha. So increased sickness equals increased days on feed, and that does what to the carcass? It, by, if I have the opportunity to feed those calves longer, 
I can get them to grade acceptably. Unfortunately, it costs me another 20 or 30 days on feed. Gotcha. And that's going to cost you feed, interest, and many different things. Exactly. Well, thanks for being on the show today. As always, it was great to have you. Great topic. Thanks for the invite, Doc. Great. Folks, Dr. Chris Reinhardt. And if you want to know more about what Chris and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.